Hi folks, it's Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So um, I was just catching up with um, stuff on Facebook and I saw that there's a thread where um, one of my videos where I talk about um, the amount of power used uh, in HEMA or just general martial arts weapon based um, sparring um, is a complicated topic and I just wanted to um, add something to that. I suppose try and make a more succinct um, view of the situation. So. There are many, many different things wrapped up here. First of all, I absolutely believe that if you're going to um, lay a hit on someone in sparring, it in some way needs to be representative of a cut that would actually do something. Okay, so first of all, um, let's put aside thrusts. Thrusts go through things much more easily than cuts, but with cuts, um, it's not that easy to cut through some things. Okay, so if there's clothing involved, um, you know, if you're cutting someone in the um, upper arm, for example, and they were wearing a jacket, not even a gambeson, but even just a jacket, like a military jacket, or even, um, you know, the type of jacket that you might wear in the street, um, very often it's quite difficult actually to get through the clothing, okay? Um, flesh and bone itself is not that difficult to cut through. I've cut a dead pig um, and freshly killed dead pig, and it's pretty easy, to be honest, to cut through flesh and far more easy to cut through bone than I thought it would be. Um, but clothing snags up on edges and actually is a really good shock absorber and spreads out the force and prevents decent uh, penetration uh, with the edge. So uh, yes, absolutely, cuts have to be put on in a way that they're representative in some way of something that would wound. And within our sparring, we have a kind of unwritten uh, consensus within my club and within the tournaments I run at fight camp and skirmish and places like that, that um, some blows are crap and we just discount. We just say, you know, no, no, no point, just carry on. Um, if, if a blow is crap, if the edge isn't properly aligned, if it just is too soft, if it hits with the very tip of the blade on a thickly clothed area, that kind of thing. So yes, a blow has to be good. But conversely, um, what um, we, at the other end of the spectrum, what some people point out quite correctly, um, so this is, imagine a triangle here, is the opposite of what I've just said, which you have to bear in mind as well, is that with a bladed implement, um, if you do successfully wound a person, you don't literally need to chop their entire body in half in order to put them completely out of action. It only takes relatively superficial um, wound or relatively shallow, shall we say, you know, like a centimetre or two wound into many parts of the body that will utterly mess a person up. If you chop with a sword or a large knife or anything like that, an axe, into someone's forearm, that forearm's not going to work properly anymore, okay? Um, if you Similarly, if you hit them in the head, they're going to have problems. If you hit them in the neck, they're going to have problems. Um, thigh, potentially problems if you hit an artery or simply if you just mess up the muscle enough that they can't manoeuvre around properly anymore. Fingers obviously come straight off, even with blunt swords. Um, face, a lot of pain, disruption to the face, the nose, uh, this kind of thing. Um, so there's all sorts of parts of the body that when they get hit, if you get a superficial wound there, if it, if it gets through whatever clothing is there, um, then it doesn't need to pass like a lightsaber through the whole of a person's body in order to put them completely out of action. Some wounds will put a person out of action even though they're medically fairly, hopefully with treatment, fairly recoverable. Okay, so that's the next thing. And then the third thing is we're talking about um, sparring, we're talking about competing and we're talking about a sport or a martial art. I'm not going to get into the semantics, semantics of, oh, you're, you're training a sport, you're not training a real martial art if you're not hitting hard enough. Hitting hard enough to do what? Okay, so that's very subjective, as we've just discussed. You can hit someone quite lightly in the neck with a sharp sword and they'll be dead. You can hit someone really, really hard in the torso with a sharp sword and it might not go through their clothes. So the whole discussion about hard and soft is utterly subjective and people oversimplify. People, you know, people get polarised and divided into black and white and um, arguing um, that, you know, the lightest touch should, should, um, should be score and uh, other people say that you must lay it on like you're trying to break through the side of a freight train or something. Okay, 
But as I say, the third element to this, the third part of the triangle, is the fact that we're training and doing martial arts and a sport, a martial art, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the fact is, therefore, we're hitting other people we usually do not want to injure and definitely don't want to kill. Okay? Um, therefore, we're hitting them with blunt swords, we're not hitting them with sharp swords, but very often we get um, carried away in the feeling of the fact that we're hitting large people wearing lots of protective gear, fencing masks and padded jackets and padded gloves and leg guards and everything else. We're hitting them with blunt objects. So it's very easy for sword-based martial arts to devolve into something that frankly is more like stick fighting. Okay, And uh, these were known in the Victorian sources as carpet beaters. So uh, in the old days they used to take a dirty carpet that was full of dust outside into the garden or the backyard or the street hang it over something and then whack it for a couple of hours with sticks to beat all of the dust out of it. Uh, and this is in the Victorian period what people who just used to thrash away with single sticks were known as carpet beaters. So within my club, within Scholar Gladiatoria, people who thrash away with no real defence, just trying to hit the other person as hard as they possibly can, we call them carpet beaters. And usually these people are shit fencers. Usually it's easy to defend against them and it's easy to hit them. It's certainly easy to hit them the first time. The only thing that they're usually successful at is getting double hits, which are bollocks, um, and uh, sometimes getting after blows. But in some way, I actually quite like the fact that they're good at getting after blows because those of us who are trying to fence properly, it trains us to hit them and then defend from the after blow well. So in a way, they're training us, but they seem to learn nothing, unfortunately, uh, unless they reform their ways. Um, so, uh, but within martial arts, so this third point of the triangle I keep talking about, you have to bear in mind that we're not, we're trying not to hurt each other. So there are situations, for example, with after blows, where you've been hit first. Say someone thr thrusts you in the fencing mask, and in that moment, their recovery is a bit slow. So you decide to lay on an after blow. How should you lay on that after blow? Should you step forward and hit them with moderate force on the fencing mask or leg or arm or wherever you want to hit them? Or should you put all of your body weight and all of your physical force um, that you physically can possibly do into laying on the heaviest possible after blow into their head or shin or hand or whatever for what you've already been hit, okay? And there are unfortunately a really freaking annoyingly large number of people who actually do this who actually just lay on after blows and all blows as heavy as they possibly can, basically because they're not that good at fencing. There are another category of people who are physically powerful and are good fencers who tend to hit a little bit too hard. And I have to be honest, um, I recognise that sometimes I hit a little bit too hard and I'm very self-critical of that and I apologise to people if I think that I've hit them too hard and I rein it in a bit. I know a lot of the time that when I hit someone I'm not hitting them as hard as I possibly could do. I know that I could do but I know that I'm hitting them hard enough to signify a decent cut without physically hurting them when I don't need to. So there we go, it's a very very complicated issue with these, it's a sort of triangle of points and very often people pick one point of that triangle and argue that the other points are sort of wrong when it actually all three points have to work in uh, symbiosis and harmony with each other and you have to recognise those three points of that triangle. Anyway, I hope that's helped clarify some of the situation, uh, some of the um, discussion uh, of this situation. Um, and it is very uh, contentious and complicated and I'm sure that some people watching this video will disagree with one part of the hundred things that I've just said, but c'est la vie. Good luck to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon for another video. Cheers, folks.